Hello. I would say good morning, but this is whenever you want to view this video. I would like to share with you a short liturgy, for lack of a better way to put it, that I created for a love feast. As you know, currently we are not able to do communion, and a love feast is appropriate for any time, and anyone can do one or participate in one. I wanted to give you a little bit of history about the love feast and also encourage you in a couple different ways. A love feast, love feasts have been around since the beginning of Christianity. And the modern use of the love feast comes from Count Zibendorf, um, who is the founder of the Moravians. If you're not familiar with Moravians, I would suggest you go ahead and look them up. Uh, they are, we are closely related as Methodists to the Moravians. And uh, the point with a love feast is to reflect on God's love. We use food as a way of showing that. I want to encourage you not to use the traditional communion elements because this is not communion. Uh, this is the sharing of a meal. So gather your family around or whatever units you're able to. Uh, if you live by yourself or with a pet, hey, get the pet up in your lap and share a few moments together. I am a firm believer that the love of God is for everything and all of creation. So I would like you to join me in this liturgy. And this video will be available for the foreseeable future that you can use it at any time. Um, and maybe at some point I'll create another one that we, you can have a couple different options. But... This is the way to start. I would like to start us with a quote. And this one comes from Count Zivendorf. There can be no Christianity without community. Please bow your heads in prayer with me. God of earth and heaven, feed us hungry children. Give us your grace that sustains us as no food can. Through the love of Christ, Cover all of us with your grace, that we might share that grace with the world around us. Amen. I would like to read a scripture for you. This is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one hath ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he abides in us. Because he has given us of his, son, his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has, set, has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
What I would like to encourage you to do at this time is to share what food items you have. Uh, if you have coffee or tea or, or crackers or whatever you might have. And I would like you, if you are in a group of people, to share with one another about the love of God and how you might have experienced God's love in the past week, month, or year. If you're not comfortable doing that, I would encourage you to do something called the Lectio Divina, which is a prayerful way to read scripture. Maybe use the scripture we read this morning or some other scripture text. You read it once, write down the word or phrase that jumps out at you, read it a second time, looking for that word or phrase so that you can probe into it with more depth, and then read it a third time and reflect on what that text is trying to say to you. That is also a particularly good uh, way if you are home by yourself or you're with a pet. I would also encourage you, and you can do any one or all of these, another option is to journal your experience of God's love from the past week. Journaling is a wonderful way to keep track of the time and to keep track of what has been going on in your life. So take a few moments to remember God's love. I would like to close with this prayer. As you have experienced God's love and grace, may you share that love and grace with all the world around you. Amen. And go in peace.